In Part 8, we looked at the information flow through orientation. Now we'll look at the interface between the environment, the plan, and the person. As we saw in earlier videos, the environment is in constant flow. Only a small percentage of it is available to our sensory perceptual system at any moment, making it largely unknowable. Likewise, the perceptual system is in continual flow, trying to make sense of what it's observed. These two flows have to meet at the point of the task. It's the objective that provides the ends and requires the ways and means. One model for this point of view is the dynamical systems theory. It emphasizes the need to understand natural phenomena as a system with many interacting component parts. Constraints are a fundamental part of this theory. They both limit and enable behavior and can be either physical or informational. With that point in mind, I'll modify the dynamical systems model to include people. This change takes into account that soccer must contain direct human interaction while other activities in sports may not. We know from experience that it's people, opponents, teammates, coaches, trainers, and so on that provide the greatest resistance and help both physically and informationally in learning and playing the game. Once you accept people as a major constraint, you need to include them in the data information flow from the environment. And this goes both ways. You are a part of their environment and they inhabit yours. Since we get new information through observing the environment, these other people become a part of our perceptual system. They're a part of our pre-attentive, selection, and cognitive processes. We are the same for them. What we have so far. We can see that every player has access to every other player's view of reality. That by manipulating the environment, you can influence what other people believe. By manipulating their beliefs, you can influence what they observe. This means that you can influence their goals. In short, every player has some input to every other player's plans and objectives. So how do you use such a powerful tool? In patterns of conflict, Boyd stress that for the opponents, you pump up friction through negative factors. This reduces their cohesion as a team and sends them on the way to an internal focus of attention. For our own team, we diminish friction in order to maintain cohesion and an external focus of attention. In part 10, we'll look at the concept of friction and how it can be amplified for the opponents and reduced for ourselves. Sing.